another year in destiny, and another attempt to prove an average folk that artificially limiting myself and attempting a strange challenge is entertaining. For context, before Lightfall released, I made a video opening a blue rare engram that I've held on to for years, promising that whatever I'll get, I'll use for the entirety of the legendary campaign. And it's time to fulfill that promise. Huh? Here's the weapon that I will be using in case you're unfamiliar with what I got. It's a rare blue sidearm called Dissonance 34, back from Red War, whose name is actually a clever reference on both the word and the number, because Dissonance will be the result of my brain activity by the end of this, and 34 is the number of years I will age visually and spiritually after this challenge. It can't be infused, which means that it's forever stuck at 1600. It doesn't have kill trackers, so I can't have any direct in-game visual proof of my achievements, but scratch those limitations, because the most important factor still stays true. This weapon can still use shaders. Here are the ground rules of the challenge. For main damage and kills, it's only the sidearm. I will be using a blinding grenade launcher in dire situations and an eager edge sword to cover distance. And I can use abilities in supers because I'm not a masochist. Let's start with the first mission, first contact. The journey ahead of me seemed tedious, boring and frustrating, so I prolonged it as much as I could until I pulled myself together and started playing on my tripped out hunter. As I loaded in, I quickly had to play around with the new mod system to ensure the maximum efficiency of my one-trick pony loadout, and shortly after I ventured into the first mission. After solid 15 minutes of gameplay, I realized that maybe I'm not in that bad of a spot. The sidearm was dealing a surprising amount of damage, especially under the constant volatile buff from Gear Falcons. But I knew that it's only the beginning and some tormenting evil was brewing ahead. As I progressed the level, I knew that my biggest pain in my smoke bomb dispenser would be the Tormentors. They're beefy, it's legendary difficulty, they have range and suppressing abilities and attacks, and they're so bullet spongy that at this point I would refer to them as scrub daddies in my spare time. And worst of all, they require aim and precision. The first one I met quickly showed me to not disrespect the rules of the challenge and successfully showed me my place in their local food chain pyramid. The real problem started happening when I was fighting more than two enemies at the same time. Since I had close to no AoE or crowd control outside of my abilities, big groups of legendary difficulty enemies became harder and harder to overcome. At this point, I had to rethink my strategy, replan my approach, and request advice from the only person that could truly help. As Sun Tzu once said, the greatest victory is that which requires no battle. God, I miss Technoblade sometimes. Nonetheless, I took that quote to heart and decided to only fight battles that I needed to, or the ones where I would have a clear advantage. The second tormentor that I met was an opportunity to showcase which methods and strategies I've learned so far through my sidearm journey, which is to create and make use of advantages that are provided with the Invisible Hunters package, and also to matador the hell out of the guy by jumping to a higher ground. After what felt like an eternity, the beast was beaten, and I quickly joined the ranks of Neomuna. I knew that this is only the beginning, and it gets harder from here. I also got my first taste of Hunter's Strand, but I'll talk more on that later. In the second mission, Under Siege, I accidentally was shown access to the closed off room because I've done the campaign already on my Warlock. Not a great start. As I was fighting through the Cabal, I couldn't shake off a feeling of anxiety, a feeling like I was late to something, but I couldn't put my finger on it. At least, not yet. I have fought through most of the Shadow Legion with ease until I encountered my first health bar main boss, Vol'jin. Oh, 
no, no, wait, that's a different one. This was my first proper tough battle, and I had to maneuver around the countless enemies, dodge multiple scion lifts, and most importantly, avoid the... Uh, never mind. After a couple of attempts and some mind-numbing clutches, I held victorious, as majestic scion bodies bathed in my gaze, levitating into the unknown. I feel sick. Like I shouldn't be here. Yeah, me too, buddy. Our third mission is named Downfall, but after everything I've struggled through so far, I'm not sure whose downfall it's supposed to be, mine or Callus. I have to say, the entrance gave me quite a run for my money, as it was swarming with beefed up cabal enemies. Another point that I couldn't ignore was that. The anxious inner feeling of haste and stress approached again, and once again I couldn't identify its origin. It felt like a tiny devil sitting on my shoulders and whispering demeaning lies into my ear. Strange. The first properly challenging room was the ship storage. I had to maneuver carefully around a comedically dense amount of enemies in the room, which by the end resulted in the arrival of another tormentor. This one was harder than the last time, since he brought a bunch of buddies to back him up. As he intimately grabbed me by the waist to pull in for a hug, I felt a sense of dread, helplessly seeing my health bar deplete. Ah, uh, nah, never mind, I'm good. After a long and tedious duel, I managed to finish off the difficult enemy with style. As we are coming up to the final room of the mission, I had a bad feeling about it. I know how ungodly many attempts this room took me on my warlock. I expected to be similarly stuck here for hours upon end. To my surprise, it took me only two or three attempts. Shows once again that the previously said Sun Tzu quote was right. Now that we've taken Strand into our hands, it's time to talk about it for a bit. Ultimately, I have no big gripes with Hunter Strand in general, but the issues happen at the super. Hunter's super is two-dimensional, which means it only attacks horizontally, which makes it a bit awkward and sloppy to use. There's no indicator at which range the whip is most effective, and my biggest grab of all, the attacks actually push you forward, just slightly, no matter what, leading to something like this. That meant that if I want to stay true to my Void Volatile strategy, I'll have to pick up Strand the least amount of times possible, which makes the Strand-focused missions a bit anticlimactic. After failing to destroy whatever Radical Mist is supposed to be, I make my grand escape and report my findings to Osiris. Wait a second. Osiris? So that's what been hasting me all this time. We need to do better! Do not delay. Push forward, Guardian. Not long as we don't waste any more time. Fun is not my concern right now. You're losing valuable time. All very good question. But one that can wait until we destroy the radial mass. Too late for the ready. And Callus was able to secure the veil. We've done nothing but waste time! Moving over to the next mission called Breakneck. A mission that shares a name with an auto rifle that I keep crying myself to sleep at night thinking about. I ventured in confident, but my sidearm was quickly shoved where the sun doesn't shine by a random vex cyclop. I have to say, completing strand parkour puzzles without using strand managed to confuse me, yes. However, it confused my ghost even more. Hey, it worked that time. Why did it work that time? Huh. At one point this mission was quite satisfying, not holding back on its enemy density and just allowing me to spawn orbs, chain abilities and explode everything. Sadly that joy was quickly overshadowed by the enormous health bar icon of a Vyvern. My favorite part of the mission was when my ghost said that it felt too easy after I spent approximately 45 minutes depleting Vyverns of their natural resources with a gun that would not be able to harm an infant child even if it wanted to. At some point my cockiness regarding doing strand puzzles without strand reached its limits and I had to be chopped up into a perfect hunter flavored sashimi. 
I feel like at this point of gameplay my apathy went into overdrive as I had to fight two tormentors at the same time. The most difficult part was not the battle, but a constant thought nagging me at the back of my mind that if I die after killing one of them I would have to start over. But after a couple of close calls and roughly 84 years of human lifespan, I defeated both of the bad guys. It pains me to say this, but the escape we got doesn't look nearly as cool as the one we saw in the trailers, with all of the skyscrapers and windows and stuff. Nonetheless, that writes up the end of this mission. And this is where the challenge started really wearing on me. I've been playing these missions one after another, and the realization that I'm only halfway through tired me to no end, so I decided to give it a good night's rest and proceed after. On the next day, after a good night's rest, I proceeded into the mission called On the Verge, named conveniently after the phenomenon that at this point in the challenge I was on the verge of tears. This was entirely a strand learning, lesson focused mission, where I had to fight off a bunch of Vex using my new abilities and powers. I already described all my claims regarding Hunter Strand, but I have to give credit where credit is due. The super does a pleasantly surprising amount of damage, whether it's crowd control or single target DPS, and what do you mean this was a bug? Huh? Anyway, at least the dive is nothing but fantastic. What I can say for certain is that I struggled, and I struggled hard. Without my invisibility and devour, I had close to no sustain and had to rely completely on cover and simply outliving my enemies, but after all, the training was complete. The next mission was titled No Time Left, had left me quite defeated and frustrated. The start of the mission was quite challenging, especially with Imprint of Nazarek, a tormentor boss that could not be killed using a finisher, which meant a battle of endurance and raw will. With every attack, every grab, my breath shortened and I was ready to give up. So I had to request assistance from my dear friend once again. The whole secret lies in confusing the enemy so that he cannot fathom our real intent. And that's precisely what I did. Utilizing the most confusing and delusional strategies that I could fathom, I successfully overcame this difficult roadblock. After an unfortunate reunion with Threshers, I met with Rohan to stop a new big bad. His name is quite difficult to pronounce, so I'll just refer to him by the last five letters of his name. Fighting Carl was a tough battle, a sparing of durability, a prolonged warfare through which I relied on random ads to keep my volatile flow ongoing, but only a mere 283 years later I came victorious. But not for long, as the beloved character of the community, who has been with us through these many tough years, have sacrificed himself. Rohan was, who am I kidding, let's move on. Our next step would be the Hypernet Strike, which worked as a nice interlude between the missions. I can't say much about it, only that it might be one of my new favorite strikes in the game. The setting, the voices of Nazarek, the gameplay, the Sparrow Session, top notch. I honestly can't wait to beat it as a Grandmaster. Good job, Bungie. Absolutely. It was also a breath of fresh air to have teammates for once. After all of this, I forgot the feeling of a good company. Headlong. I knew I had to do it at some point. At first I was oblivious. It seems like a, just another simple strand training mission. But this mission was holding a dark, unforgivable secret. Let me show you. For whatever reason, you respawn at the very start, so as you can imagine, the training process was unsatisfactory.
It was painful, but as we all know, pain is weakness leaving the body. Sun Tzu said that, and I'd say he knows a little more about fighting than you do, pal. At least it means that I'm close to the finish line. You could say that it's my desperate measure to end this sooner rather than later. I have to give the campaign some credit. Strand swinging onto a thresher felt amazing, something that's straight out of an action-packed superhero movie. You could almost say, Arkham Asylum makes you feel like you're Batman. After dealing with another tormentor, I was tasked with defeating the city's gates from a countless onslaught of Shadow Legion warriors, which included two more beefed up scrub daddy tormentors. In front of me lay a choice, stay on Invis and stick to the safety of it? or go hog wild with the green stuff. Needless to say, I went hog wild with the green stuff. After leaving Kyrel alone to deal with her parental issues, I strolled my hunter cheeks deeper and deeper into the containment until I finally stood against the villain of the story, Callus. Now that I think of it, it's a bit ironic that I will kill this man with a blue sidearm after everything this man has endured in the OG Leviathan raid aka every single exotic weapon, it's only a fitting end, if not ironic. I knew that this battle was going to be tough, but I did not expect the amount of times my ass was handed back to me on a gold engraved platter. Death after death, I struggled with the enemy density, the damage check that is callous, tormentors, and the repeating choice between void or strand. Although so far on this journey I stayed on the void path, my damage output at this point was a 1600 level weapon that was so low that Kellis was regenerating his shield faster than I could damage it. I knew that something had to be done. I had to ask my longtime friend one last time. In the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. A true way to beat a challenge is to adapt to it, to go out of your comfort zone to triumph over the overbearing difficulties, and dire needs require smart usage of all resources that are available at hand. I brushed the dust off my long-forgotten blinding grenade launcher, I equipped the pair of trousers that smelled awfully similar to the sushi place around the corner, and put all focus that my brain could provide into this fight. Health bar after health bar, phase after phase, voice line after voice line, I crumbled Callus' health away until one final push, one good smack. And then he was done for. I've beaten the entire Lightfall campaign solo on legendary difficulty with a blue sidearm. And right after, an indescribable wave of sensation blasted over me. It was not a moment of joy, it was not a moment of triumph, nor a moment of victor. It was but a moment of relief. Relief that I never, ever have to do this again. I'm so relieved. That was one of the most painful things I've done in the shooter game, and I've done a lot of painful things.